And so it is. Greetings, my beloved. I am Ikara, cosmic being and sovereign servant of free energy, upholding the universal laws of love, joy, freedom, and oneness. It is a great pleasure for me to be here today. It's a great pleasure to speak to all of you today. It's been a while since we met face to face, although every day we do meet heart to heart. I am not a teacher, not anymore. I am a friend. You are, and you shall always be from this point forth, the teacher. You are the ones who have chosen to carry the name ambassador of free energy. You are the ones who have chosen <laughs> to carry within you that purity, that oneness, that peace of divinity that you would call in ancient times, it almost seems, home. <laughs> because home is where you now are. Home is what you are creating here. It is what you carry within you. And it is what is pouring out of you, as Solaris would say. I don't come here alone today. Others have come in with me. Names, we know names are not important, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. Others like Adamus, Tobias, Kutumi, God knows why. <laughs> and your personal assistants who are basically nothing else than part of your own energy field reflecting your divinity back towards you. A long, long time ago, my beloved, my good friend and brother Tobias has told you, even in his very first communication towards you that your guides were leaving yes they were and they have you have been given the reins in your own hands you have been given the steering wheel in your own hands but it didn't mean that you didn't meet need any type of let's say reflection because that is what you are doing isn't it you are walking around in a palace of mirrors and some mirrors are more clear Others are less clear, but those that you have created for yourself, those that you would call the assistance towards your own energy continuation, are very clear. At least they are becoming so. Oh, we know that you couldn't see yourselves a while ago. Not very, very bright. You couldn't see the bright light <laughs> that was shining within you. But now these mirrors, as you are working on yourself and as you are continuing to work on yourself, have cleared. <laughs> and so, for the very first time perhaps, you are entering into a space where you can see yourselves truly. I know, and the others here know as well, that you cannot see yourself clearly through others yet because if you look through the eyes of others you still see the judgment about yourself sometimes although we tell you that it is not there it is not there it is just reflections upon reflections upon reflections you could even ask the question has the judgment ever been there or is that something that was put upon you is that something that you, in the course of the days that you have spent here together already, have called the buffer? It's actually a very interesting word, the buffer. It's better than the veil, in fact, because the veil, well, the veil is just a concept. It has never really been there until you made it real. And you made it real right after the demise or the rise in a way, of the Lemurian energy as it went back into the earth, as it traveled through the dimensions where it went to a safe space, this Lemurian energy, waiting, watching, wandering, 
when you would once again be ready <laughs> to carry this energy. That is the energy of home. That is the energy of oneness that I spoke of when I just came into this body today. And the dimensions have been closed off safely for a while. It was impossible for any type of fully incarnate Lemurian energy to come through. It was impossible. But now, as Solaris has told you yesterday, great changes have begun on planet Earth. And you should be grateful. Not to us. Not to any of us. Not to any of your leaders either. You should be grateful towards you. I have a question for you. Would you, after this Ekariya, this talk is over, and after you have left this room, or wherever you are listening to this, or wherever you are reading this or watching this, would you look in the mirror, please? Once this Ekariya is done, and I'm not talking about the mirror in your bathroom, I'm asking you to look in the mirror that is reflecting back to you in the eyes of the other. Just do it. And just for the first time ever really, see you. And you will see that the dimension that was a nice and safe cocoon for Lemurian energy is now breaking open once again and is pouring out of you so beautiful to be here so beautiful to sit here so beautiful to watch this process happen as I'm not watching with these human eyes of course I am seeing the energy as some of you are feeling the energy are touching the energy are tasting it and I see this brilliant brilliant light that's the closest I can come to the English language to describe it pouring out of your very heart and focusing here somewhere in the middle of the room and as it all comes together and builds up this nice wonderful oasis of perfection because <laughs> that's what you are creating it is coming into this body and then as this body is acting as the translator of that energy, these words are pouring out of me now. That is what this new and free energy is all about. As you know, a while ago, it came in from another place, this energy that is the carrier wave for my patterning, that you would call a kara, for my being, and it would pour from this body out into you. Now it is the other way around. Interesting times, isn't it? That you are, in effect, creating this. You are even creating the music that is pouring out of Mr. James Lumley over there because that is not the only place that the beam is coming into. It's not just in the heart of this body. It's also in the heart of the musician over there who doesn't even know he is channeling. <laughs> he has no idea, in fact. He doesn't, he's not aware of it. He thinks he's just a human. But then again, all of you do so as well. And there is other places where this energy that you are creating, that is talking now back to you, is pouring out into as well. It is pouring into this recording device. And it is pouring into that camera over there. And as it does, these things are actually becoming interdimensional portals of time and space because as those who are listening to these messages later on are experiencing what they are experiencing right now, that love and that joy and that feeling of oneness and that warmth within their hearts, that is pouring out of this group that is sitting right here. So take some time to think about what you truly are and what you truly do. It is magnificent, simply magnificent. But I'm not here to give kudos to all of you for an hour, of course. I am also here to open up a chapter of insights, information, 
The chapter I'm about to open is not because I asked for it, it's because again the dimensional cocoon is now bursting open again and you are asking for it. I'm not going to give you something today and in the coming lessons or gatherings to come that you don't already know. I'm just giving you back that which you have at one point experienced as your reality. Before we go into that, I just want to give a few comments on the reality that you are sitting in right now, because it's so very funny. We, I and the others, see this process that you call life, that you call Earth, happen on a daily basis. And to us it's so amusing. Actually, the channel yesterday gave a very interesting example about how your reality works. And he gave the analogy of a dollhouse. And let's call the doll Barbie. You know, that's original, isn't it? <laughs> so let's call the doll Barbie. Are you Barbie? <laughs> More than I'd like to be. <laughs> <laughs> so let's call the doll Barbie. And Barbie is wandering around her house, thinking it is real, not knowing that there is a presence around the dollhouse, looking at her, actually enjoying her, and loving her. Because that is what you do with dolls. You never get angry at dolls, almost never get angry at dolls. Some of you did at one point in your young lives. But usually you don't, and usually you caress these dolls, and you love them, and you let them do things that you would like to do yourself, maybe because you are afraid to do them yourself. It's a possibility. And the analogy that the channel gave is that of an outside being, exterior to the dollhouse, all of a sudden taking a couch, but to that external being would be a mini couch, and putting it on the first floor. To Barbie... That would be quite a shock to see her couch disappear all of a sudden and then run up to the first floor and finding it standing on her bed. But it is actually the way reality works. However, up to a point, you have believed that beings such as myself, that you would now call the beings external to your reality or outside of your reality, let's call it the external heart instead of the external mind in this case and beings such as myself were separate from you you know what happens when somebody like myself, Ekara or any of my friends, Adamus who is kind of influencing my voice today what happens when we ascend when you will ascend, because that process is happening, when you will incend in your case, you become part, again, of everything around you. And you allow the process that everything around you and everyone around you is basically creating you. So you become the highest good of all that is around you. The final mix, so to speak. And that is what I am. That is what all of us, as we speak to you, are. No matter whether we speak in Mzaya circles, or in Shambra circles, or in lightworker circles, or in shaman circles, or in kitchen circles. <laughs> kitchen psychology. We also speak there, you know, and quite often. No matter where we do it, we are your blended self. We are a representation of the best that you can be. And that means that we evolve with you. That is what is happening now in these times. So there I was at the end of the supposed Mastering the Grand Illusion series, thinking it was time for me to retire. I'd actually created a nice dimension for myself with a couple of palm trees and an ocean and a hammock and a lot of cocktails yes it does sound familiar <laughs> however I was called back 
called back into being, called back into existence. Because as Solaris has told you yesterday, you have created a new future for planet Earth. Up until now, there would be those that would tell you you are creating the future with every single step that you are taking. Yes, that is true, but in a world of choice, as you have shifted from potential to choice, in a world of choice, you have made a choice instead of always continuously selecting one potential after the other. The balanced state of being would be making one choice that is so big, that is so all-encompassing, that actually is Achenaic, that runs back through the timeline and forth through the timeline, and as such, that one choice that you as all of these spiritual groups have created has actually manifested a new timeline, a new future on planet Earth. It means that planet Earth from this point forth cannot be destroyed, cannot be diminished. It has become a constant in the universe and in the cosmos and that is something that wasn't so a little while ago. And when I say a little while I do mean a little while. I am talking about your linear yesterday. <laughs> now it has changed. And that is the beauty of it. That is the place that I come into. Kutumi, at one point, called it the playing field. Others have called it many different names. But you have pulled that into your reality and created it here. And still, still you look with the same human eyes, still you wake up in the same human mornings. And sometimes there is a little spark when you think, ooh, I am master of my own reality, uh, reality and I can create my own reality. But most of the time you just wake up in whatever state, but not a real happy one. I am challenging you from this day on to set your intent as you go into your limited sleep time to wake up tomorrow on that pearl, on that constant that you have created for yourselves. And I am not talking about the way you feel, I am really talking about the fact that there is a different type of world right under your noses and you are not seeing it. I see it, I see the thing that was called by Kutumi the other day, the schizophrenia. As you are bringing all of your personality lives together and blending them as one, you are at the same time returning to the innocent state of planet Earth. And that reality has now re-emerged. That would mean that actually at this point, and it is why you feel a little bit weird sometimes, there are no longer 12 vibrations on this Earth with 144 frequencies below. It is now double at this point. And it has been discussed for a very long time. It, is, it won't be there for a very long time. But it has been discussed for a very long time that there would be a new hologram for Earth. That there would be a new paradigm for Earth. Some have called it the third Earth. Some have called it the new Earth. Others call it the free planet Earth. Others call it Lemuria. <laughs> it is here. And so you are walking around as a 12th vibrational being in a 24 vibrational hologram and it is making you quite uneasy sometimes because you see what is here and what you want to be here and you have to make the choice you have made the choice to create it I know now you have to make the choice to experience it 
And I'm telling you that we won't continue coming in and telling you that you have to make a choice. I am telling you that it is the last choice you will have to make in the bodies that you sit in today. And that is news. The 24 vibrational hologram is something that happens only once every 144,000 years. As you are entering a new cycle, the group that is here talked about it today. And you now have to choose. What cycle are you going to step into? There is a reason why you and groups like you and actually everybody listening to messages like this one are here on this earth. You have been in a type of energy training, so to speak, as you were listening to message after message after message. Would have been more interesting to listen to massage after massage. <laughs> Is there something going on, James? <laughs> <laughs> But you are listening to message after message after message after message. And it has prepared you now so that you would be the ones to make the choice. I have told you before that there is a core group of 144,000 that are making this choice. And within that core group, there is an inner circle almost of 144. And then there is the carriers of the Akene which is a group of 12. I'm not going to talk about these names. The names are not important. Where they are in the world is not important. What is important is that at some point they will hear these words. So, you have been given the concept of the Akenet. You have been given the concept of the Akene. You know that it is spaceless, timeless, that it is infinite, you don't all have to come together, all 144,000 of you, and actually there's more than that, but anyway, that was the minimum requirement for the operating system to install itself on your hologram you call Earth. You don't all have to come together, sit in a room, and create or choose this world into existence. It would be fun, however. But you don't have to do it. You can do it right now. As you are hearing these words, you can make the choice and you will see how quickly it goes. You will see how quickly all the others will hear these words. Maybe they will hear them through my words. Or they will hear them through the words of another. Speaking maybe in South Africa. Or speaking maybe in another language altogether like Swahili. Why not? It's a funny language. At least a language with a funny name. And so is English to the Swahilians. Which is not a real name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting myself into quite a yeah, predicament, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Losing all of my credibility here. <laughs> well, that's good. I should lose all my credibility. You should start believing in yourselves. <laughs> all I can do is guide you. So, as you do this, as all these others hear these words, make the choice. This world can re-blend itself into a 12th vibrational reality. I'm not saying that after the choice, the job is done. I am saying that after the choice, you have the ability to create it the way you want. And that way is already chosen. You see? That is why Solaris uh, is talking about bending light. <clears throat> and she will talk about bending earth and bending air and bending water and then finally she will talk about bending consciousness and that is when you will see it all come together that is when basically I can go back to my place in the Bahamas that I created for myself <laughs> I will remain here however I wanna continue talking to you even if it is just about the weather <laughs> so I have just given you the paradigm of things that are happening on this earth right now the reason why this is working, why this is happening, is because you have indeed paid good attention. When I was speaking about the mind, when I was speaking about illusions, and where others were doing similar things, because, you know, 
when I speak or when one of my brothers or sisters speak it's the same thing it all belongs together it's very interesting to see you as humans here on this earth because I'm not done making fun of your reality yet when you see humans here on this earth and they say as you have talked about it this this last few days I feel connected to Imzaya awareness or I feel connected to Shambra consciousness or to the light worker group or I only attend cryon seminars you know it's the same like saying that's my favorite restaurant or I don't eat broccoli for instance you can't separate these things they are all carrying the same message it's just a different spectrum and only when you put all of it together can you see the whole truth and then you will recognize that the whole truth is you it has always been you there is no other truth than you a different truth however a different flavor of truth of the same truth that is coming up is that you are starting to recognize yourself in the other and I am telling you this as you walk around this earth with all of these personalities as you walk around this planet with all these different preferences and flavors that your likes and your dislikes you think you are so unique and you think you are so different or at least you thought it when you were still looking at mental energy when you were still looking at illusions what you will discover very shortly is what you already know but now you will start to experience it that beneath it all you are exactly the same and that is what is frightening most humans I'm not saying it's frightening you I'm saying it's frightening most humans out there who would not listen to these words or who would not go to these things or who would not even pick up books about greater truths they are afraid that they are all the same in the end because what is the fun in that they think there are people out there who like to play the human game the way it has been played up till now and they don't have the courage or the wish to install the update almost there's a new type of human version 1.2 <laughs> and you can download them for free you can even change the color of your hair <laughs> there is a new type of human standing up and you know it and you have downloaded it into you because this human is beyond illusion this human is beyond mind and beyond personality has no preference has no gender and that is also what is scaring most people because what do they do with that <laughs> <laughs> maybe delete it again huh? <laughs> 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 Reinstall boobs, please. <laughs> now I know why I come in here. <laughs> I have to think of now. Oh, yeah. When he wakes up in the morning. <laughs> he does do that. <clears throat> he is not the only one, though. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention that the new human is also crazy. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> what to do, what to do. <laughs> so anyway, that is what is going on the new paradigm has been downloaded into you and it has reflected or it has begun its reflection into others I know that you have gone through all this 
this whole thing about illusions and actually as I will start up yet another series very shortly in Norway I believe it will be that it will be made available for the first time called the Freedom Chronicles we will start talking about shedding your skin because a snake for instance once it decides to shed its skin it starts to come loose and that is what has happened to you but you have not yet seen how to shed it and that was S-H-E-D <laughs> consciousness <laughs> you have not yet seen how to do that and that is what this new information which is ancient is going to be about and it will be very interesting because you will see that it will not only bring together all the knowledge of channels all over the world but it will also begin to bring together ancient Mayan knowledge ancient Peruan knowledge for instance and many many other of the ancient shamanic races such as the Indian such as many others that have now disappeared and that has always been the point as you explored what it was to be you you kind of separated yourself into all these little spectra and now it is time to put it all together again and that is what the freedom really is about that is why I've always said that you can't be free and stand on a mountain somewhere and shout I'm alive unless anybody else can have the ability to do that too as long as one child or one person on this earth is under forced labor or is in poverty or in hunger you can never be truly free and now I'm not only talking about earth here I know that many of you believe in the concept that you would call aliens I know that many of you know about other races even at the rim of the cosmos well I'm not going to go into detail here but those who need to understand this will you can also not be free if all of it hasn't shifted I've always told you that Earth is the 12th planet in a 12th universe among endless countless universes in a huge cosmos which actually is finite although the human mind would not be able to comprehend that I know the human akene or the human heart can and as this key is now going to be turned and it is going to happen in the coming weeks then you will see that the pulse goes out to all that is around you and this is indeed beautiful after that comes a time of great exploration that is when the adventure of what it means to be alive really begins imagine a cosmos without all of these illusions that we have talked about oh form is still gonna be there and the separation even is still gonna be there to a certain extent but you're gonna know it is a rule of a game instead of thinking it is a law of truth you see so you're still gonna be able to walk around and bounce bounce into each other you are still gonna be able to do either that or you're gonna have the chance to do the other thing to be the fluid ones again and you can switch but it will not appear real the prison will be opened up again so let's talk some more about your reality <laughs> how about politics and the economy and religion how about money 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 how about all of those things we told you a while ago not so long ago that these things would begin to crumble and you are beginning to see the results in your reality the stock markets of the United States and other countries going down getting ready for a huge crash religion about to be uncovered as 
the fiction that it truly is. And definitely politics, where many, many are now standing up who are holding the keys in their hands to show those who are either too lazy to look or too careless to believe that what has happened in recent years and actually for a long, long time is that you are again being told a fictional story. Everything you see, everything you are told, everything you hear, everything that is put upon you as a law is fiction. And the fiction is about to end and the writer's pen is about to be given back to you. And I know you will write a wonderful story. I also know that you will begin to see the difference between the story and the reality. And many have asked this. Many who would now be afraid of the change that is to come, who actually have stepped away from this to be the gatekeepers, as Solaris has said, because you can never really step away from this once it has entered into you. Many who would be afraid of all of this around you here ending will be very satisfied to know that this playground of experience will continue to exist in Lemuria because that's where my talk today should go isn't it in Lemuria they knew this in Lemuria they were aware of the fluid state and once they started the story that you are now thinking is real the locked or the constant or the defined state and they were aware of it for a thousand years. But much as you would sometimes get stuck in a game, you can have this addiction to a type of game or to a TV show or whatever, and you would start thinking it is more real than what is out there. Once this addiction sets in, some start forgetting. And this has also happened, as you know, in Lemuria. There's only one cure. There's only one solution, and it is the heart. Because you see, as you have been told about the vibrations and the chakra system, and the O and the A and the E and the I, you know that through the heart, chakra, runs water, which is fluidity, and light, which is consciousness. It is A and it is E, or I, actually. And that is what the heart is truly all about. Fluidity and consciousness. That is what is coming out yet again. So the story will be there. The illusions will become fun. And at the same time, you will reclaim the truth. <laughs> and that is beautiful. That is beautiful. So let me tell you about the truth. Let me tell you a tale of truth, a tale of a world of innocence, a tale of compassion, a tale of fascination also. And you have given a couple of wonderful words here in this group today. You talked about wonder and you talked about stillness. All these things are that which is called Lemuria. The stillness is about a non-vibrational state, as you now already know. So shedding your skin, which is going to come up in the Freedom Con Chronicles, is also going to be about shedding your vibration. You have no idea, because we couldn't tell you before, that underneath is something. And that something is nothing. Now there is a, a question that could come up in your mental energy. How can I be something when that something is in fact nothing? Well then you know you don't know about nothing. You don't know what nothing is. You think that nothing is a undesirable state. Because what would you be if you are nothing? It's even a, a, a curse in your language when somebody tells you you're nothing. You mean nothing to me. 
Oh, that's social death, isn't it? It is the death of story, yes. Nothing is the death of story because everything that I can talk to you about right here, everything that you experience right here is all story driven. So, the nothing is actually what lies behind the story. So the nothing we have now defined a little bit as Akeneic energy or Akenergy, but don't forget that that is also a word. Don't forget that that is just a concept as a part of the story as well. The only way we could set you free again, and you have created us in a way, so you are setting yourselves free. The only way you can set yourself free again is to rewrite the rules of the story. You have rewritten the ending, but in rewriting the ending, you forgot that you were still in the same virtual reality mode that you were in before. In Lemuria, you knew better. Do you know why vibration and frequency was created in the first place as the solid part of that game you call life was being created? It is so you could separate from each other but then also blend together. You all now sit here in bodies and you have been told that these bodies usually carry 12 vibrations and 144 frequencies and you think you are this limited total item. In Lemuria, however, you merged and you blended. In Lemuria, you understood that there are more than 144 frequencies to you. There is more to you than there is to you. If you are actually going to make the calculation, you would have to say that there is to you, as an individual, so to speak, there is 12 vibrations, 144 frequencies, times the number of objects that are on the planet and in the cosmos. And with objects, I mean everything. I mean that the chair that you're sitting on has 12 vibrations. The keyboard that Mr. James Lumley is playing on has 12 vibrations. A star out there has 12 vibrations. A nebulae. But also, as you are now discovering, because Solaris told you yesterday, a blood vessel or a red blood cell within you or even a skin cell has in itself 12 vibrations. You think you are separate beings, but actually your separation doesn't go all the way. If it went all the way, then you would be nothing more than one particle. But you are made up of many particles. So the separation stopped somewhere, you see? What I'm actually telling you is that you have 12 vibrations or 144 frequencies times near infinity. And that is what Lemuria knew. That is what Lemuria was based upon. In its fluid state, it's a natural thing. In its constant state, it's a different thing. So as you were there in Lemuria, this is how a typical exchange went. You would be walking in your story of solitude, <laughs> in a way. And I mean that in more ways than one, that word, solitude. You were walking there as a supposed being in a body, and you would connect to somebody else, you would meet somebody else. And as was the way back then you would actually lift your hands up as you greeted somebody else and your hands would touch and as your hands would touch you would 
bring the hands together to create the triangle. And the triangle would move from one heart and turn around and go to the other heart. And that was just ritual. Because what happened after that is what was real. What happened after that is that you started sharing frequencies with other beings. And so it happened regularly that you started the day with your 144 frequencies in order and you would meet somebody and you would share you would take some of your frequencies and they would go into the other being and as that happened the other being would blend its extra frequencies now with you and so you would truly and utterly and completely be changed actually now you are stuck in one story in Lemuria that what lies between white and dark was a very big array of gray a lot of shades of gray and the least gray shade so to speak would be a world that was nearly fluid and that was a little bit constant that was a little bit real solid and the last shade of gray as it went to black so to speak would be the least fluid and the most solid and then there would be a complete solid world and a completely fluid world and you had a choice you walked through these shades like a child would walk through a theme park through a game so to speak and every day you would choose where you would want to be and you would shift and you would blend and in most of these states it was even very beautiful because as you connected to another being and you let go and you moved on again as you really connected to yourself basically and you let go and you moved on again little sparks of energy little mists almost of energy would remain and some would come and walk through that and pick up this new being basically that was created and you must know my beloved that I am just using words now I'm trying to describe something which is nearly indescribable as you are going back to this state you will begin to realize that that which you have called the higher self always all throughout time you have called a part of you the higher self that that higher self part of you is actually the complete part of you and that that complete part of you is still there so some told you that Lemuria sank others told you that Lemuria rose others told you that Lemuria went a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right <laughs> so many stories exist I'm telling you it didn't go anywhere and this is different from what I have said before I know I will tell you this from your point viewpoint of illusion Lemuria did sink you saw it literally disappear I'll use an Avalonian expression the mists closed and appear to be closed forever and you couldn't find it anywhere you couldn't find the way back and after generations thousands of generations the knowledge was lost and you didn't even know that you weren't home now you are beginning to realize that once more and you are going to open these mists you are going to begin that paradigm once again so Lemuria didn't go anywhere neither did any of the other planets it is just that you can't see it anymore your senses 
could not pick it up anymore with that limited array of frequencies. I am telling you what happens when I come into a body such as this one. I don't go anywhere. I am in the same time-space continuum than you are right now. Separation is nothing more than a limited perception of frequency. And beyond that appears to lie nothing. So I am right here. And as I am right here in the same space that you are sharing with me, you, as you are believing this, basically, are bringing me in into your reality and that is what it is all about it's all about belief it's all about truth what is your truth and what is that which you are going to create do you understand this so you've never been very far from home you've always been walking around into it and we have seen you as that dull house that was standing somewhere that's actually all around us as well and that is the beauty of it. So, now must come the time where you begin to blend all of these stories together. Because even on your quest for freedom, on your quest back home, so to speak, you have been given so many stories. Layers, you call them today. All of these layers are meant to reconnect you with the totality that you are. I'm going to give you an example. It's a story, but I promise I won't make my stories as long as Tobias's stories. <laughs> there is a lady, and she's called Elaina. And she's living in your time. And she is standing on a beach. It's a nice day. And the waves are caressing her feet. The sun is touching her skin. And she feels alive. This lady hasn't felt alive in a long time. Elena hasn't. She's been taking care of her children for years. Going to her workplace for years and actually taking care of the biggest child of all, her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Elena's husband died two days ago, before she was on that beach. And Elena felt weird. <laughs> As her husband died, she knew she had love for him, and yet she couldn't shed a tear. Couldn't come out. She couldn't feel the loss. She couldn't feel sad. And actually, Elena was quite a good actress because as people came up to her and said, oh, I'm so sorry for the loss of your husband, she just nodded and took out her handkerchief and blew her nose. So, Elena, as that moment happened in her life, felt that she had to re-examine herself. She said goodbye to her old life. She, she, the house that she was living in that was too big for her now, she put it up for sale. And she took the first airplane that she could somewhere warm, she told the travel agency, and she left. And now Elena finds herself on that beach with nothing left and everything about to begin again. And Elena is just watching the skies and a few clouds go by. <laughs> and a seagull flies over. And it catches her attention. She realizes that she hasn't been out for a long time and that she's been looking at the wrong things in her life. That she's seen seagulls on television, but she never went to the trouble of seeing it for real. It's the first time she actually sees a seagull. And she looks at it. And 
It perplexes her. And all of a sudden, there is a voice in her head. And the voice asks her, Who are you really? Who are you really? She doesn't think about it. She's heard this voice for so many years already. <laughs> she doesn't think about it. And again, she tries to put the voice away and classify it as just another thought. And then she sees the seagull come back. It's circling her, circling way above her. Who are you really, it says, again. And Elena doesn't answer. And all of a sudden, the seagull goes, Wah! That came out differently than I thought. <laughs> no. Are you awake again, Anzaya? <laughs> So the seagull made its seagull sound and it flew off. And to Elena, it feels like the seagull was a, was a bit upset, but then she thought again another thought that she put away because how can a seagull be upset with her? And as it flies away, a feather is coming down, just twirling down and lower and lower and lower. And it lands on the water. And a cloud, I mean a wave, same thing, brings it to her. She takes up, she picks up the feather and looks at it and starts to walk. Thinking again about her husband, thinking again about the time that they spent together, thinking how she's going to get rid of all those possessions and what she's going to do with the rest of her life. And some part of Elena gets into a romantic dream state and she thinks, maybe on this beach, on my walk, I will find the man of my dreams. Who knows? She doesn't find the man of her dreams. What she does find is another feather. And she picks it up. Same feather. And she walks on. And she finds another one. And it's almost incredible because she remembers these stories as a girl, as a small girl. And she thinks this can be right because she's now looking a little bit further down on the beach and the dunes are in the distance. And she sees that there is one feather after the other, after the other, after the other. And it looks like a path. Can be true, can be real. She decides to follow it anyway. There's nothing else to do. And it takes her up to the dunes and over some of the hills and becomes quite ridiculous, really, because this can't really be happening until Elena crosses the last dune. And when she does, she looks in shock at what she sees because... There's a whole bunch of feathers, hundreds of them, thousands of them even. How could that be? Who put them there? And she feels this irresistible urge <laughs> to jump into it. And she does, because first of course she looks if nobody else is seeing her. I know that you would just jump in. But she looks around, and she does. She just lies there and watches the clouds go by. It feels wonderful. It feels like heaven. It feels like bliss. And then again the voice comes as another seagull flies. And the voice says, This is who you really are. And actually the story of that voice that has gone on for years now in her head she is getting quite tired of it 
and she decides to respond and she says why can't you leave me alone and the voice just says why can't you leave me alone And all of a sudden, Elena thinks, this can be real, I, I must be dreaming, I mean, come on. I'm walking on a beach, I'm finding all these feathers, I'm jumping into this deck of feathers, this paradise of feathers, and now there's again this voice. She says, this can be real. The voice says, you're right, it isn't real. You want to find out what is. Why is this who I am? Elena replies. She's not one to follow the logic of questions being asked. And the voice says, this is what you have created. You have created feathers. Elena says, what? I created feathers? Why, why, how can I create feathers? I'm not a bird. Well, says the voice, it becomes quite a pleasant conversation. The voice says, actually, technically, you didn't create feathers. You created angels. And Elena, now thinking that she must have fallen asleep and that she is dreaming, says, angels? Yes. Yes, the voice says, you are the wing maker. <laughs> what is that? What could a wing maker be? You are a being of such creational power, the voice tells her, that you have created a world of fantasy for mankind and Elena starts to wonder did somebody give me Prozac or something and wasn't I told and the voice laughs and actually the conversation goes on for quite long a long time and Elena starts to like it she starts to like this conversation because actually this is what she wanted she had been in a life all lifelong all those years and taking care of children reading them stories taking care of her husband telling him stories as she came home from one lover or something and now all of a sudden she seemed to be in a story that she would tell her children she decides to pursue it wingmaker that is the name that she remembers and as she asks the voice what is a wing maker the voice just says and in it she recognizes a little bit of her own name it sounds a little bit similar so she decides to get up she decides to walk again whether she be dreaming or not it doesn't matter to her anymore everything is gone anyway the story continues next week no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> the story continues after a couple of days because at a certain point, Elena has enough of it, and she decides that she will just go, go back to her hotel room, and she decides that she will watch television, at least the stories that are told there are better than those that are being told to her in her head right now. Must say, up to this point, the story isn't quite going anywhere, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm just trying to put you asleep. <laughs> we can't force one of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, she turns on the television. 
and on it she sees a commercial about pillows and she changes the channel and on it she finds a documentary about seagulls and she changes the channel she thinks she's going crazy here and on the next channel she finds a song that some kids are singing some young group of kids a rock group is singing about the ocean and she decides to turn the TV off because now she really has gone off the high edge if that is the right expression and she goes to lie on her bed and looks into the magazine is lying there and again it is about feathers and she decides to go downstairs and she talks to the clerk but the clerk doesn't talk back to what she is really asking him he talks to her about heaven and angels and this can be happening this can be happening what is really going on here she begins to understand that something is really wrong and that she must do something about it but what can she do and that's what she asks in herself what can I do and the voice comes back and it says Elena you can either make this a long story or a short story <laughs> <laughs> you can either make James play for another hour <laughs> uh, truly <laughs> well you wanted a friend instead of a teacher I didn't say it was going to be a cool friend <laughs> Hold <laughs> your feather. <laughs> oh yes, I've got one on me as well. Interesting, isn't it? So, <laughs> oh my God, it's about you. Actually, you will find out that the story is about all of you. Mm. Next week. <laughs> Next week. Next week on Ekara's teachings. <laughs> <laughs> the car is having a love affair with Katumi and Tobias can know about it and he walks in on them now anyway the story continues when the voice replies to her isn't this what you wanted isn't this why you came here isn't this where you want to go yes says Alina but why am I responsible for creating angels? You say, I, I created heaven, I created this whole thing. Yes, you did. And let me tell you another thing, the voice says. You created the earth. Oh, go away, Lena says. And let me tell you another thing. You created the stars. And Elena definitely starts to notice that something is wrong. And Elena says, I want a short story. <laughs> <laughs> and the voice says, Elena, if you really want a short story, I'm going to give it to you. You're dead. Your plane didn't make it. Don't you remember? You didn't make it. You actually were traveling with your husband on that plane. And you were on your way to a holiday. And you died, Elena. She says, but if I died, what is this then? What is my body? And gradually, as you know, the voice keeps talking to her, she starts understanding that something must really be happening that it really can be true that she died but she doesn't quite get it yet so the voice takes her all of a sudden to her own funeral 
as cliches go. <laughs> She's taken to her own funeral. And after that, she's taken into this huge room, huge hall, and it's all marble, because that's actually what she dreamt of when she was a little girl, a huge marble hall. And she was dreaming that people would be dancing there and that she would be a princess, you see. And in that room, one person comes in, and another comes in and a third and they don't appear to see her but what appears to happen is that they're all starting to dance together hmm. and Elena's quite shocked because so she doesn't know what to say because who would believe this if you heard it spoken to you if something within you was saying this she starts to realize something is wrong but not that she's dead but but the voice tells her, as now the hall has filled up with thousands and thousands of people, do you recognize these people, it says. And she says, no. Look deeper. All of these people are you. That's what the voice says. All of these people. Again, she doesn't understand it. But she likes where she is. She continues dancing with someone who now appears to be her and she pretends to that person that nothing is wrong. And then, all of a sudden, the voice tells her you must go back. You are the wingmaker. What is this word? Why, why this wingmaker? Why, why do you keep saying this to me? Because, the voice says, you have the ability to give people wings. You have the ability, which is the most unique ability of all, and you've never actually created that potential to make people dream. That is what you can truly do. And Elena looks at everything that's going on around her. And she's starting to get it. All her life that she's lived, she didn't know. She raised a family, she took care of her husband, didn't find happiness there, so she had a couple of affairs. She got a couple of addictions. All because she wanted to find meaning. And as a little girl, indeed, when she was very small, she used to tell all these stories to other children, but nobody ever wanted to listen to them. Actually, they were too busy playing with their cars and playing with their toys and everything the voice says again you are the wing maker you make people dream you have to go back and she says if I do then what lies beyond it and the only thing that the voice tells her is exactly what you are experiencing right now. It is your job, the voice says, to go and to make people dream about bigger lives, about better lives, about creation. Make people dream about love. And she says, love... How can I make people dream about love? Have you seen the world that I just died in? Have you seen what's going on there? Yes. Yes. We've seen it. We are a part of it, voice says. We know what the world is like. But the only reason it is that way 
is because people have forgotten how to dream. <laughs> I don't want to go back, she says. I don't want to go back into that world. And the voice says, who says that you have to go back to that world? I told you you have to go back. I didn't tell you you have to go back and be reborn again and go through all of that again. No, no. You have to go back, but you have to make a difference. How can I make a difference, she says. One person, yes. Yes. I will tell you how to go back, the voice says. You are going to go back through the dream state. You are going to go back through the dream world and you are going to give people the stories that they've always wanted. You're going to give them the lives in their dreams that they've always wanted. And Elena says, that's just crazy, I can't do that. I was just a housewife with a husband and some husbands on the side. <laughs> how, can I, how can I do that? Do any of you know what I'm talking about here? <laughs> I don't know what I, how I can do that. The voice just says, trust me. And it gives her this big, because it's, it's, it's a dream state, right? It gives her this big sheet all tied up in it millions and millions and millions of little feathers <laughs> and so Elena accepts and she goes back thinking that there is going to be years and years and years of work ahead of her if she has to go into all of these people's dreams it's gonna take a long time to go through that and then then it happens Lena goes back into she selects a person and she goes into that person it's a child child's dream she goes back into it and she sees a wonderful dream world and a child is playing it, swimming, experiencing dolphins, and everything that a child would experience when it is dreaming, when it is allowed <coughs> to be the way it wants to be. And as she opens up the bag to take one of the feathers out, wind comes up, and all of a sudden all these feathers fly away she loses the grip on the bag and all of the flatters fly away millions and millions and millions of them and that's when she looks around and she says what is that because the place where she is in the ocean with the child it's got a beautiful weather no clouds blue skies but it appears that there is a space where the child cannot see it is beyond the ocean and all of a sudden she sees that immediately at a certain point the ocean stops and there's a desert and she sees parts of the whole bag of feathers fly into that desert and then she starts really to look around and she sees that there's all these different landscapes all around her hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them and within them all these people one after the other dreaming and sometimes it appears as though these lines intermingle and a person interacts with another person and all of a sudden they're from the they're, they're standing in the desert and then they're standing in the city somewhere and then they're standing in the past somewhere what appears to be the past and on and on and on it goes and what is uniting all of these spaces all of a sudden is these millions of feathers that are flying to all these people and they're coming down and they're on the floor 
and you s and then Elena sees one person after the other, after the other picking up this feather, thinking, "What is this doing in my dream? It's not supposed to be here. How can it be a de how can it be a, a feather in the city or in the desert or wherever they are?" Some are even experiencing pretty nasty dreams about being chased and all that. And as one person loses their dream grip and suddenly goes into another person's dream, they turn into a monster and they chase into a werewolf. <laughs> and they chase that person. And then they get into the other space again and all of a sudden they're a fairy. And then again something else happens and something else happens and something else happens. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> well, like, you know, Tobias is on holiday. Somebody has to do this. <laughs> what it comes down to is that Elena suddenly sees that the whole of the dream state that billions of people are dreaming every day appears separate but actually it is all the same dream and all of a sudden she knows what she has to do since there is no time and space there she has enough time to actually connect to each and every one of those people each and every one and she talks to them and she explains what has happened to her the amazingly boring story that has happened to her <laughs> she talks about her husband dying and then all of a sudden finding out that she died herself and she talks about what she has experienced and she actually tells these people look look over there and look over there and look there's there's another dream happening right there and there's another dream happening right there and right there and before she knows what happens all of these people are realizing what is happening and they're starting to look at her and Elena tells her story to them that she created heaven and that she created angels and feathers and that she had to come back for some reason to make people dream again and actually some of the people that are listening to her start reacting they start getting it and Elena smart as she is maybe for the first time in her life I'm not looking at you for any reason because of that <laughs> maybe for the first time in her life says you know this feather that I gave you it is actually a great gift if you take this with you as you wake up you will not find a feather under your pillow I'm not gonna be that cliche <laughs> in the story but as you wake up you will see that this feather actually has the power of transforming your life and so as they are in a dream state some of the people think oh this is interesting and they do it and they all of a sudden disappear out of the dream state and they wake up and Elena remains behind and a second later they appear again and they said oh my god it's amazing Elena says what And she says that girl that disappeared and reappeared again says I just had the most wonderful day and I was hoping I would meet you here again when I fell asleep and she said what was your day about well she says I was talking to all of these children and I was telling you I was telling them your story and they actually believed me and they started playing with me and they put aside all their things and Elena 
suddenly realizes something and she says, What's your name? And a girl says, oh, My name is Lena. And then she realizes that she's looking at the five year old version of herself. And she does something that she's never done before. She looks into her own eyes and she sees herself and she discovers her beauty and how amazingly loving and joyful she really is. And she says to that girl, please wake up. Please wake up and tell the others. Tell the others that I will be here waiting for them. Tell the others and go tell your whole school and ask all of the children in your school to tell all of the other children. And the girl wakes up again. And Elena stays behind. And she sees one person disappear. Another person disappear on that platform of dreams. But this time, as the people disappear, the dream states that they were in, the situations that they were in, disappear with them. One after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. And far in the distance, Elena sees other beings that she can't really make out, but they don't look human. But again, they are disappearing as well, one after the other, one after the other, after the other. And in the end, she is standing in a field that is simply white and still unwritten and the little girl that is the young Elena appears again this time she looks completely different she looks happy she looks powerful open she's amazing and she says, you have to come back with me. You were not going to believe what happened. I did it, she says. I, I told everyone. You know, I, I made a film on YouTube and I told everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on Google. <laughs> that was a joke, of course, but the girl says, I just told one other kid and another and, and another and I told my brother also and before you know it they started disappearing can you imagine that you have to come back and Elena says well I can't if I go back with you then either one of us is going to disappear, right? The girl says, why does it have to be so? Why do, why do any of us have to disappear? She says, because I can't be... You know, Elena has watched science fiction movies in her life, so she says, I can't be in the same time and space as you are. <laughs> and the little girl looks her in the eyes and says, that's bullshit. <laughs> And she looks in the eyes again and she says, you know, in fact, this entire story that is happening to you is bullshit. It's not real. It's never been real. Come back with me. Just come back with me. And Elena decides to do it. And the girl takes her hand and takes her back. 
And as she does, she finds herself again on that same beach where the story began. Only this time, when she looks up into the sky, she doesn't see a seagull. She sees an airplane. And something deep inside of her knows that that is the airplane that she was on when she died. And she does see the airplane have a type of malfunction and go down into the ocean and crash. There's an explosion kilometers ahead, miles ahead. And that was it for her. She's supposed to be dead, but she's still standing there on that beach. The next day, because Lena decides to remain on the beach, she goes to sleep. The next day, when she wakes up, she remembers her dreams. Or rather, she remembers that she couldn't sleep at all. That she tried to, and that her dreams were not really dreams, it were more thoughts, as though things that had happened to her in the past came up and, and started to, to simply disappear. Like they just vanished, like one person after the other that was in her life came in her thoughts and, and said goodbye to her. And the last one that appeared was her husband that was actually also with her on the airplane. And he also came to say goodbye to her. And when she wakes up in the morning, Elena looks out over the waves and over the dunes and she notices something. The buildings far, far removed from the beach that she was on into some place warm that she was are gone. And she looks up into the sky and the sky looks more real than it ever, ever has before. And she starts to walk. And when she walks a couple of miles down the beach she in the distance sees another person and the person looks at her as they come closer and reacts quite strangely and Elena says what's wrong what's 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 going on why are you looking at me like that and the person says what are you wearing? Have you noticed how you look? Did you come from a ball or something? Dressed up party or something? Costume ball? She says no. And she goes towards the ocean and she looks at herself and she sees that her hair and her body look quite strange indeed as though she is wearing some sort of a foil around her and it sparkles and it shifts and it moves and she's looking at her feet in the ocean and all of a sudden she sees that it seems as though her feet are melting, melding, blending with the ocean. And as that happens, it is as though her whole body is turning one inch after the other into water, into part of the ocean. And as it goes on and on and on, it completely covers her up. And when it gets to her crown here, right at the top of her head, the body that was Lena just splashes down into the water. But she isn't gone. 
she realizes everything that is going on all over the world every beach every wave every fish within that ocean is her and she also realizes that if she wanted to she could connect to a sea turtle somewhere and crawl out of the water and lie on the beach and she's looking around her she does that she does come out of the ocean and it becomes quite natural to her she shifts from one animal into another into a tree and again into a person and she notices that other people around her are doing it too and time goes on and time goes on and more time goes on passes and at a certain point Elena has become bigger than the whole planet itself she has experienced everything what it is to be a tree what it is to be a cloud what it is to be a star in the, the heavens and she gets bigger and bigger and she expands and expands and expands until she touches the edge of the galaxy and then she touches the edge of all galaxies combined until she touches the edge of the cosmos and when she does that there is nothing and there is everything and it appears as though everything that she has become this whole cosmos this whole universe that she has become just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until it is nothing and in this nothingness Elena and all the other names that she now carries is still she knows that she can be anything that she wants to be but she also knows that she doesn't have to be she knows she simply knows and that is not the end of the story my beloved Imzaya friends that is the beginning of the story it is also your beginning it is a story that was told to you backwards from the point of death of an individual to the beginning of all life the reason why I told it to you backwards and I know right now you are wondering why on earth or any other planet would Ikara tell this long story to us the reason why I told it backwards to you is because it is the reversal of creation from its ending point to the beginning and I'm telling it to you backwards because you have yesterday come to that ending point and it is what you had to do Amziah it is why some stepped forward I know that Solaris has told you that you had stepped off a cliff or off an edge or whatever you want to call it what you actually stepped off of was the linear path that was the edge that was the cliff you see 
the reason why the world c keeps or appears to go on and on and on and on is very simple. I've told you at the beginning of this long talk or discussion, I told you at the very beginning that something fundamentally has changed now on this planet Earth. And that you had a choice and that there's 24 vibrations creating the hologram of Earth right now instead of 12. The turning point to go back to that moment of creation to make the cycle complete is not the choice to make things different because that's what you continuously try to do. The turning point is the simple choice which you actually already took on a subconscious level but now you have to take it on a conscious level to stop the linear game. And I don't mean blowing up the planet. I don't mean destroying anything. I just mean stepping off of the linear path and onto the circular again so that you can bend consciousness. And that is what Solaris will teach you. You can bend consciousness back to the beginning. You know? You might have heard very different concepts of Lemuria. When I speak of Lemuria, I do not speak of a Lemuria that started about 75,000 years ago and lasted up until 12,000 years ago or whatever date you want to apply to it. I talk about an Earth and a Lemuria that was there since the beginning of creation at that moment of nothing up until the point that you start believing in the story. What you must realize is that where you have to make the choice is in the blending of the dream state and the reality state that you are in. The biggest separation that has ever occurred is the separation of realities. And you did that when you created this reality and your dream state reality and then it just kept on separating itself further and further so that you are all now sitting in your own little versions of reality looking at the bigger picture but not seeing the bigger picture because you haven't put it all together yet. You are not going to be able, Imzaya, to put it all together here in this reality of Earth because as long as you are sitting here in these separate bodies you can never truly understand what the other one is feeling, what the other one is experiencing. You see? The only place, and that is why the metaphor of the story took such a grand turn in the dream state of Elena. The only place where this can happen is in your dream state. Up until now, you have been trying to be the ambassadors of free energy or freedom or whatever you want to call it here on this earth in reality. What you have forgotten about is the importance, however, of the dream state. The only way that reality can go to consciousness, to awareness, to oneness, to infinity is when you blend these two together again. Another way of explaining it is this. And this is going to last another hour and a half. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> another way of explaining it is this. The 12 vibrations that have, up until yesterday, made up your reality were to be found here. And your dream state was just one or two frequencies, a pair, depending on your consciousness, one or two frequencies of your complete reality that you sit in right now. The third earth, the hologram that has incended into Gaia itself, 
is not to be found here in this reality, it is to be found in your dream state. This means, my beloved, that your dream state has now become real. It carries actual vibration and before so it did not. Not really. It carries not even a full set of frequencies so you couldn't really make much of a difference there. Now I am telling you that the choice that you need to make is to choose your dream to create it there because that is a field of experience that is actually completely free of all types of rules unless you take your old paradigm personality into it every night is what you have been doing up till now but if you take it in there if you take your new one if you take your free one if you take your essence in there tonight after you look into each other's mirror and see who you truly are like Elena saw herself reflected in her five-year-old self if you do that and you can take your essence into your dream state tonight you can have a blank dream state like you can have a blank DNA and that is where you can truly make people aware and then the whole paradigm in the 12 vibrational state that is your dream state can be blank again if you make that choice and I know I'm talking metaphors but I know deep down you are understanding me if you make that choice that is what you take back with you and that is when the path towards what we are now calling Lemuria turns around and when you have gone halfway the only difference is that at the curve of the path linearity ends and the walk back doesn't have to last as long as the walk up to the curve you see that is where you will find your infinite self I know I have never spoken in these types of metaphors again since Lemuria actually I've never spoken them to you because you don't remember Lemuria some of you do I wasn't able to speak in these paradigms and these metaphors and these greater truths in fact because what your mind wanted was spirit technical information I have given you however last year that which you needed the tools that you needed to discreate to uncreate the mind the skin of the mind has become loose in the freedom chronicles you will learn how to shed it what I'm giving you now or what I have given you now and will continue to give you now even though I might have to talk to an audience of one <laughs> if you all get bored out of your skulls listening to these stories is a much bigger truth it is speaking to and from the heart of all things up until now Echariahs were talks from the heart of all things but now that from is coming out of you and what I am doing is speaking to the heart of all things which is what you are becoming you cannot understand what I have just said completely at least with your mind oh you heard the words you heard all those words one after the other after the other after the other but the totality of this message is the first one of more to come is basically literally to be seen in its totality all at once burn that on your akene together with the information and knowledge that Solaris is given you you will see what will happen I have given you the recipe 
or the key ingredient in that recipe for freedom, oneness, and awareness. And that is my mission. That is why I am here. And if you stop listening with your human ears and you start listening with your divine blended senses of oneness, if you start seeing the story, if you start tasting it and smelling it and touching it instead of just hearing it, then you will see what it is truly about. It is not encoded. Actually, what is encoded is you. And what is going to be decoded now is your senses. So the lives in Lemuria Chronicles will continue not only with stories about Lemuria, because Lemuria is in a state of no thing that you cannot comprehend up to this point. I know there have been stories, I know there have been interpretations. So many of them. <laughs> so many of them. And some of them are closer to the truth than others, that is right. But, what you have been given now is imagination. And therein lies the key ingredient. Remember that when you go into your dream state now, in the twelfth vibrational dream state, that you are no longer in a subconscious creation of yourself, but that you are in an entirely different world altogether. A hologram waiting to come into reality. And that when you sleep, when you do it, that is what will happen to you. You can actually meet each other there. You can actually make the choice there. The 144,000. That is the room that you will find yourselves in. That is the room where you will make the choice. That is the room where you will uncreate the abomination that part of this world, and a lot of it actually, has become. So choose wisely. Don't throw these words to the wind. Don't ignore them. They are more important than, I would dare say, anything else I have ever brought to you. The rest was just a guide to get out of the box. But on the outside of the box, things are completely different. The reason why those who are here, and probably those who have listened to this and remember the past two days, haven't been able to sleep for the past two days is because the dream state <clears throat> was becoming 12th vibrational. That's why the dreams have been different. It is now a real world, only without any rules that you have here, without the typical illusions and the solidity of those illusions. So I guarantee you that tonight, if you so choose, you will definitely be able to sleep. I hope and I can encourage you to spend your time wisely. Because what you will be experiencing is going to be as real as it is here. So don't let the mind or the external mind feed you the old data it has fed you so far. As you are letting go of your personalities, you know that your external mind, once it can no longer control you here, will try to control you in the dream state. What it created in the past was annoying and it could create sad feelings as you woke up again. But now, if you allow this to happen, it's going to become more real than you think. And actually, in that respect, 
you need to be ready when you go into it so that you are in charge of it when you are there. I encourage all of you, and it doesn't matter when you do this, because there are going to be others listening to this at a later point, and they are going to go to the same moment in the dream world. I encourage all of you to select very carefully that you are going to come together, all 144,000 of you, and actually more. And that when you do, you are going to make the choice together. Those listening to this, seeing this at a later point, will have the ability, I guarantee it, to come into this moment that this first group of pioneers, if they so choose to be, will step into. They will hold the space for you. All of those that are right here, please follow them. Step into it. Dream back into time. Create the room, create the space, and make the choice. And that is all I have to say. And now my long outro. Once upon a time, no. Just <laughs> <laughs> all I have left now is hope and trust all I have left now is the beauty that lives within you that is what is creating me that is not your future self it is your oneness self your infinite self all that remains is beauty and love and joy and freedom. One of the last times that I spoke to you in the Mastering the Grand Illusion series, I told you I had stepped through the door, remember? And I would wait for you on the other side. That is the room that I am talking about. That is where I'm waiting for you with coffee and tea and cookies. I'll maybe even do a little dance as you arrive. So I will see you on the flip side of your dreams tonight. My dear Imzaya, light workers, Chambra, mom and dad, because that is what you are to me in a way. At the same time you are my children. Sleep tight. Ea i, oya i. I will speak again. And so it is.